In this video, we're going to take a look at Gitras version tracking feature. For this, I used the example application that ships with Gitras version tracking example. First, we need to analyze the binaries. Then we need to save the results of the analyzed binary. And obviously, you can also do manual analysis. I will quickly do some manual analysis because Gitra will also allow you to port over your existing analysis results, for example, function renames and comments over to the new version. So I'm just gonna rename these functions here that are called with these strings. And this is just an example to see whether the symbol that I just changed is ported over to the new version correctly. Then I will also set a comment. And then let's also try to see whether variable renaming is ported over. Okay, so I then also set a bookmark and now I will save this. Now we're ready to compare these two versions with version tracking. To this, we start the version tracking tool and then we start a version tracking session. Give the session a name and then select the programs. The source program is the program that you want to transfer your analysis results, Gitra calls this analysis results markup to the new version, the destination program. So then we hit next and then a set of precondition checks is performed. For example, it checks whether the analysis is valid. That means whether the program has sufficiently been analyzed. And here, it now gives me a warning and says, yeah, it's not, it's only 41% analyzed. And this is because the um, example application is so small. I previously tried this with Firefox and it was way bigger. So it had more, more percentage of disassembled code in it. So we just gonna ignore this and hit next. And then we're gonna hit finish. And then we will have a version tracking session. And what the version tracking session does is it gives you two more tools. One is the source tool and one is the destination tool. And in here you can browse the code of the source and the destination. I will just move these to different monitors. So this is the source tool, this is the destination tool. And while we now have a session, we do not yet have any matches for markup items that we can port over from one binary to the other. This is where we have to run a correlator. So I will just select all. If you're running this test on a bigger binary, then I recommend first reading the documentation about version tracking to see what these correlators do because this step will actually take a very long time. I tried this with Firefox with an older version and it took several hours to do all the correlations. And I'll just leave all these settings at the default. If you wanna get further into the details what each setting does, you should really consult the documentation, the help file, which you can access here on this question mark or just hovering over this and pressing F1. But for this test, I will just leave it as is. And then you can also limit this to a selection. Let's say you have a particular set of functions that you only want to track. You can select them and only track these but I'll leave it as the default. And now we run the analysis. And then it gives us a warning that some of the correlators didn't find any matches. And the matches that were now found, found were added to our session. So we hit OK. And so here we have our version tracking matches. First, we have the type, whether it's a function or a data type, then the score. That means 
how similar they were scored by the correlator. Then the confidence, that means how certain this match is. And then here we have the source label and the destination label. Last, we have the algorithm that was used. That is the correlator. For example, this is the exact symbol name correlator. And then when we scroll down here, we have the exact function bytes match with a common territory where we have only similar matches, then it's obviously uh, the similar data match correlator, etc. I will now set the score filter to one. That means I will only get matches that were exact. And then I will also set the confidence to something like 1.5. I don't yet know exactly how confidence is defined, but it seems a good value. And what I now will do is select all. And then you can either accept these matches, but you can then also apply the markup. And the markup is basically the function name or the name that you assign to data type or comments that you assigned. Gitra calls this within a, uh, in a version tracking session markup. And then you hit apply markup, then all the markup from, from one version will be applied to the other version where you selected the match here. So we first accept these and then we're gonna apply these. Now let's see how the programs have changed. First, the source program, it hasn't changed at all. However, it has this version tracking matches entry down here. You can see whether a particular function had a match or not. So let's see, for example, this was the function that I renamed. And as you can see down here, you have these matches. And what Gitra then automatically does is it changes the destination tool to where you're currently selected in the source tool. So for example, if I navigate into this function here and then select this match, the destination will also navigate in this match, as you can see down here. So now if we have in the destination, we see that the function name has been ported over. And also here, our comment has been ported over. However, what has not been ported over is the variable renaming. And also what has not been ported over is the bookmark. Maybe I've done something wrong and you can port it over, but it seems that not everything is automatically ported over. And when you, for example, search in the version tracking matches window for this function that we changed the label, and then you can see in the version tracking markup items, you can see the items that have been applied. For example, here you see that the comment has been applied. Here you see that the function signature, that the destination already had the function signature because we didn't do any function, because we didn't change the function signature. It was obviously the same for source and destination because we only ran auto analysis. And then here we have an applied match that has been replaced. And this means that originally the order analysis has named the function, the generic value here. And then our source value has overwritten this value with the new value here. Then you also, in addition to markup items, have the so-called implied matches. And that means all the other stuff that we have in the function, for example, the strings here and the function that we actually call so this is basically how you set up a version tracking session and port over your markup 
items from one binary to the new version of the binary. And I really recommend everybody that is interested in version tracking to read the help on version tracking workflow because the whole thing is rather elaborated and cannot f and cannot fully fit in one short video.